our one-way analysis of variance with no repeat and measures example, we're going to be working with super rats. Let's say that we're doing research on rats to see if we can create more splinters of the world. We have a super rat serum, high and low dose, and we have a rat suppressant serum that creates pinky-like rats from pinky in the brain. And we're going to be comparing these to Remy, which will be our control. So as I said, our IV is going to be treatment or what type of serum that each rat gets. We have control, low and high dose of super rat serum, and low and high dose of rats present. We don't have any other IVs, so treatment is our one IV. That means that we have five total levels for this one IV of treatment. For our DV, we're gonna be measuring how super these rats are on a arbitrary super rat scale of one to 100 one being pinky and 100 being a splinter. Since we're measuring our DV with scores, that means this is a score or continuous data. Our other question is to see if these suppressants or serums give us different types of rats. So we're looking for a significant difference. With one IV and one DV, you know that you'll be working with a one-way ANOVA. ANOVA! If we had multiple DVs, you'd be working with a MANOVA, or multiple analysis of variance. Remember, when we're analyzing variance, you're always looking for the variance in the DV. Here we have our data in terms of scores on super rat scale. To calculate an ANOVA by hand, you'll need to memorize how to work with this source table. Remember, source stands for sources of variance. They can either come from between the groups, which is ultimately where we want the variance to be if we're trying to show that there's a significant difference between the groups, or it can be from within the groups, which would be actually your error because if you have a lot of variance within a group, how can you show that they're significantly different from another group? To begin with, we'll be calculating the sum squared. You'll need to work with these bracket terms. Now remember, bracket terms are just a theoretical way to calculate something. Mathematically, they don't mean anything. Now it's data time. First thing you'll need to calculate before you even get to the source table are the column statistics. For each group that you have, you'll need to calculate the mean of that group, the sum of all the numbers in that group, the sum of the numbers squared, and the standard deviation. So let's start off by finding our bracket terms now. Do not be scared by the notation. We're just using the notation from the Keppel and Wickens book. So for the A bracket term, this refers to your groups. If you look at the notation, that means it's the sum of the group, J standing for the column. What you want to do is you want to take the sum of each group, which we've already previously calculated, square each of those, and divide by the number of rats per group. Don't forget to divide by little n, which is the number of rats per group. Remember, a bracket term deals with groups. The y bracket term stands for the individual rats. So with here, we're going to take the sum of each individual number squared. If you look at the sum x squared number for the control, that number comes from 49 squared plus 51 squared plus 47 squared, so on and so on, to get 12,421. To deal with the individual y bracket term, take each of those numbers highlighted and then add them up. Then divide by 1, because remember, 1, or the y bracket term, stands for the individual. T bracket stands for total, T for total. Easy, right? So the way that we calculated this, we were just taking a shortcut. When you're looking at the total, you want to calculate the total sum for everybody. So what we did was we took the total of each column and added all that up first. Square it and divide by the total number of rats in our study, or A times N. A standing for the number of groups, little n standing for the number of rats per group. That also stands for capital N, or total number of participants. Remember that we have five groups and five rats per group. So the total number of rats that you have is five times five, or 25. 
So now we know our bracket terms, and we can start to calculate the sum squared. Once you've calculated the bracket terms, it makes calculating the sum squared very easy. It's simple subtraction. For your convenience, we have included the bracket terms that we previously calculated in the same screen. Unfortunately, you'll have to memorize exactly which bracket terms to subtract when calculating the sum squared. For between group, it's simply A bracket term minus T bracket term. Within group is Y bracket term minus A bracket term. And total is Y bracket term minus T bracket term. You'll also need to memorize how to calculate degrees of freedom. Now it's time to find the degrees of freedom for each source of variance. Remember that with our notation, A is the number of groups and N is the number of individuals in each group or for our specific example, the number of rats in each group. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a little reminder, here's the data again. Five total groups, five rats per group. For degrees of freedom between groups, it's A minus one, or the number of groups minus one. For within group, it's A times N minus one. And for total, it's A times N, or the number of groups times the number of rats per group, minus one. If that's too much for the pinkies of the world to memorize, all you'll have to memorize then is the between group, which is number of groups minus one, the total, which is the total number of participants that you have minus one, and then subtract those two and get the within group degrees of freedom. Next in the source table is the mean squared. It's very simple. You just take your sum squared that you had already calculated and divide by the degrees of freedom for each row. Here's the between group mean squares, within group mean squares, and we don't need to calculate the total. To find the F ratio, divide the mean squared of the between group divided by the mean squared of the within group. With the notation, A stands for between group, S of A stands for within group. Keep in mind that if you ever hear error term, you're talking about the mean squared of the within group. Because remember, if we're trying to find a significant difference between groups, any kind of variance within our groups will make it very difficult to show a difference between the groups. So your MS within is your error term. So this is our new F ratio, 499.2. And this is our calculated F. Do not fear, we're almost done. So in order to figure out if our calculated F is significant, we need to compare it to a critical F that you would get from an F table, likely in the back of your textbook. You'll need to know what degrees of freedom to use. For the numerator, we use the degrees of freedom from the between group, and for the denominator, we use the degrees of freedom from the within group. To find the critical F value, you'll be looking at values of the F distribution. It'll look something like this. For our degrees of freedom, this is the intersection of 4 and 20. You'll notice that for each intersection of degrees of freedom, there's a few rows of data. We're interested in the alpha 0.05 level. This doesn't necessarily mean that this is always correct, but conventionally speaking, an alpha level of 0.05 is the most commonly used alpha level. This gives us a critical F value of 2.87. But do we have significance? Oh no! So this is very simple. All you do is compare your critical F to your calculated F. If your calculated F exceeds your critical F, in this case it does, 499.2 is bigger than 2.87. 
or the way that we have it visually for you is 2.87 is less than 499.2, whichever way you like. If your calculated F is greater than your critical F, this means that yes, you have a significant difference and we can reject the null hypothesis. Remember that all null hypotheses, notated as H0, state that there's no significant difference between the groups. So now that we know that we have a significant difference somewhere between the groups, we need to figure out where this difference is. This significant F only tells us that there simply is a difference. We don't know if it's between the splinters or the remis or the pinkies or the little pinkies and the big pinkies and so on and so on. For your knowledgeable pleasure, the F that we just calculated is also called omnibus F. Omnibus meaning overall. Overall, we have a significant difference. But how do we figure out where the difference is? That's where our planned comparisons come into play, which will be our next video. We'll also be making sure that the planned comparisons are all orthogonal to each other. So stay tuned. The end. Narf. <laughs>